Today we're going to be working with inequalities and you might not be familiar with the word but you have done these before. What they are is they are the opposite of equalities. So if you look in the word equality you see that it has the word equal in it but it has the in as in not. So what it, the word literally means is not equal. A mathematical sentence that compares quantities is an inequality. Inequalities contain the symbol less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. You should be pretty familiar with these two, the less than sign and the greater than sign. It could also be said that it is fewer than or it is more than. If you notice here, we have a combination of the sign and the bar of an equal sign, one of the bars of the equal sign. So when we have that bar there, it, it means is less than or equal to, or is at most. The phrase for this one is, is greater than or equal to, or is at least. And these are key things you're gonna wanna remember as we're doing these next couple of days of math. The directions here say, determine if the given value or values makes each inequality true. So here they give us what they think the variable should be. Here they give us numbers to substitute in for the variable to see which one will work. So we're going to start with this one. It tells me that x is equal to 5, so that means I'm going to take that 5 and substitute it in place for x. And when I do that, I'm just going to plug it in, and I have 5 plus 4 is greater than 8, I'm going to solve that down. 5 plus 4 is 9. It's greater than 8. That is true. Look at number 2. My expression or inequality is 10 is less than or equal to 15 minus y. They're telling me here that y is equal to 7. So I'm going to take that 7 and put it in place of y. So I have 10 is less than or equal to 15 minus 7. So 15 minus 7 is 8. So 10 is less than or equal to 8. That is false. That is not a true inequality. Over here it gives me a string of numbers that I'm going to substitute in. So when I do it, it's the same process, it's just I'm going to have three problems. Here it tells me that 32 is less than or equal to 8, and I'm going to substitute in times 3, which is my first value. 32 is less than or equal to 8 times 3 is 24. That one is false. We don't like that one. That's false. Our next one is 32 is less than or equal to 8 times 5. Well, I know that 8 times 5 is 40, and so I know this one is true. Well, you should be able to figure out what the next one is also, but let's do the math. 32 is less than or equal to 8 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56 and that one also is true so in this case n could be 5 or it could be 7 to make this expression true yes there can be more than one answers and we'll get to that tomorrow here this one says that 3 times m 3m remember that 3 is the coefficient at this point I don't know what m is, but I know I have three of them, is greater than 27. So here are the numbers they want me to substitute in. So here I have 3 times 8. Whoa. Is greater than 27. And I know that 3 times 8 is 24. Is greater than 27? Nope, that's false. Here I have 3 times 9 is greater than 27. 27 is greater than 27. 
Well, that doesn't make any sense. How can a number be greater than what it is? So this is false. And then we have 3 times 10 is greater than 27. That would give me 30 is greater than 27. And this is true. So in this case, m would have to be 10. Now, I want to talk about this one for a minute. A lot of people recognize that it would be 27, it's the same number, but in order for this to be true, it would have to have that greater than or equal to um, for it to be a true statement. That means, what that means is that bar tells me that, I'm sorry, it won't point to it, it's too low on my iPad. There we go. What that bar is telling me is that it can be 27 or it can be larger than 27, but it can be. Since this doesn't have that equal sign with it, that equal bar with it, it has to be larger than 27. So 27 cannot be greater than 27 because it's the same number. Um, so it would have to be 30. All right, here's a star release question on this. It says, Mr. Smith has a maximum, and maximum means that is the most he can spend, of $50 to spend at a museum. A ticket to the museum costs $7. So to get into the museum, he has to spend that $7. He can spend up to P, there's my variable, dollars to buy other things at the museum. Which inequality can be used to find the possible values for P? So think of it this way. You know I love my pictures. We have a bar. That's his $50. Well, I know he has $7 to get into the museum. This is the ticket. And I know this is his spending money here. Okay, so I know that whatever 7 is and whatever P is, can it, what does it compare to 50? Can it be larger than 50? No, it has to be smaller than. So it has to be less than 50. So this $7 plus whatever I spend for P has to be less than 50. Now, let me ask you this. That part we know, but when we look over here, we realize it can, he can spend every cent of his $50, every cent of it. He can go home with not a penny in his pocket. So it can also be equal to $50. So his cost of the ticket plus whatever he spends, he might not spend all of it. He might just buy a drink uh, he might buy a t-shirt, whatever. He might not spend all of it, but he cannot go over $50. So $50 is the most he can spend, but we can also equal it. So when we do that, we see that at D is our choice. This one says he can spend the amount plus the $7.00 and it has to be less than, or it can be equal to $50. This one says that whatever he spends plus the $7 can be greater than or $50, greater than or equal to $50, which doesn't make any sense. Here they're taking the cost of the $7 away from the amount that he spends, and that is not the way um, the problem is worded. It says that he has a maximum, which is the most he can spend, a ticket costs seven dollars. He could spend p dollars to buy other things. That means that the seven dollars is not included in that. So if the problem was worded differently, then it might be this one, um, but it's not. So you just kind of have to read the problem carefully. So that's how this is tested. And like we say, every one of these tests is a reading test. So now you need to get your guided practice page out of your workbook pages that you probably put in your binder even though I told you not to and you need to work on page 646 
the guided practice problems so that you can get some practice in. Your homework is on page 647. Remember, we're here to help you. We want to have all our mistakes over here. Let's get our questions out of the way. Let's take advantage of the fact that the teacher's here to help you. And then let's be successful when we do our homework. All right. Thank you for being rock stars.